So I think that in Trieste is really warm, right? Yes, yes. They especially yesterday also, well, it was melting under the sun. But I could spend a couple of hours by, by the sea uh, with a, a, a spritz in my hand. <laughs> so it was also relaxing time. Yeah. So a bit of refreshing time during this uh, super warm time. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. It was just, yeah, here is just 20 degrees uh, and windy, so it's perfect. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. I have a bit of envy now for you. <laughs> I think that most of people here in Finland uh, would like to have uh, warmer, but I'm fine with this. I'm really fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know what it means. Uh, to, to be in a very hot weather, and so <laughs> you know you're in the right place now. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Synergy, because you are going to release uh, a new album, uh, Heaven Horizon, on 25th of August, right? Yes, yes. What can you tell about this, uh, this album? This new album has been uh, really a, a great achievement for us because uh, it came after the pandemic years. So it was really difficult to, um, to simply be all together, to work on the new songs, to refine all the details, uh, to choose how to move, uh, when to record, where to record. And uh, so it was really difficult uh, under the management aspect. While under the composition side, it was also difficult because uh, the pandemic period quite um, quite uh, low lowered all the um, all the, the will uh, to to do something i don't know how to explain but uh, it was really hard to find again a, a spark uh, to start again composing but in the end when we finally could uh, uh, put uh, ourselves to into composition again it it was really uh, awesome to do it again and so event horizon is the product of uh, these years of um, really big uh, big changes in our lives and um, it speaks a lot about uh, big themes like time distance loss uh, um, and so I feel really connected to most of the songs. Yeah. And I think also the, my bandmates are. You wrote that uh, this album is uh, like the essence of emotion that mm -hmm. you felt you did in the past years. Yes, yes. I think that at least in the first song, it's we can feel the emotions. So I'm I'm waiting to hear the, the whole album to see <laughs> what kind of roller coaster we have. <laughs> yes, yes, I I assure you it it will be because really um, we passed a lot of difficulties and so Lorenzo is going. <laughs> so I <laughs> we can but yeah. <laughs> no. So it's going <laughs> um, So yes, how how you could hear in uh, in the first song, Castaways, uh, we not only speak about emotions, but we really dive into uh, one emotion at a time to dwell everything that uh, that anyone can live. Uh, in, in that kind of situation, in the, that kind of moment. Castaways, the first song, is quite of 
desperate uh, if if I just read the lyrics uh, because yeah. it's one with no hope and also the um, the musical part uh, is quite obsessive in um, in the rhythm uh, it's more aggressive compared to the yeah. to the past yes 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 that that's how um, we worked uh, in in this album we wanted to express every emotion in a very specific way so to live kind of live again that sensation every time we sing we play and we listen to the songs yeah it makes sense, yeah. It's. <laughs> I think that uh, uh, many many bands uh, worked on album during the pandemic, so it's easy to hear feelings that people, emotions that people put into music during that time because it was it was really a different time. Yes. Yes. So. It marked a, a big change. In, in the not only in the music business but in in every aspects of our lives and so of course it made also a big change uh, even in the way we we intend music we we in the things we want to express with music yeah and uh, the the album yeah. of the album is uh, really nice and also in the uh, photos that uh, were the, the, the promo photos uh, the colors are uh, orange and blue there is uh, a particular meaning to choose this color or well it was driven by the artwork because uh, at first we decided to work again with Gustavo Sardes, uh, who made also the cover of our previous album, Out of Connection. And we only uh, give him the subject of the artwork. We wanted, we wanted this uh, female figure kind of in a fetal position, in, in a sort of uh, nebula, black hole, in, in something space related. But we didn't uh, give him any other indication. Okay. And so when he came up with uh, that cover, we were amazed. It's, I think it's our favorite so far for all the band members. And this orange color, uh, the orange color uh, that is uh, circling around the girl and which is a strong element of the cover drove us to to think uh, well maybe we should uh, use the the orange color also in our uh, photo in our photo, uh, photo sessions to to stress uh, this uh, link between uh, uh, the album and the the creator yeah yeah and are you using those uh, those dress you have a top and then you have a skirt uh, are you using those also on the live shows or so for the for the first live show which will be in our home country Trieste I will use also that dress yes yeah it's really nice <laughs> What you will see in the in the in the physical version of the of the album, there will be another kind of photos, uh, which will have always an orange uh, themed uh, dress, but uh, in a in a different style. Okay, so we have to wait. Uh, to yeah, five <laughs> of August to see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so far, uh, talking about uh, all your albums, uh, do you have a favorite song? Talking about your discography. Oh, my whole discography? Yeah. Oh, okay. It, 
it's difficult. I was uh, expecting you to ask me uh, in this album, and I was quite ready to, to, <laughs> to answer, but in my whole discography, um, I think that I have to make um, a step behind and go to Out of Connection, um, where there is one of my personal favorites ever, which is the last song, The Circle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the longest, it's uh, one of the most uh, intimate songs. Uh, it has a kind of a, a dark uh, sensation uh, behind, but with an open uh, central part. And so I like it a lot. And I think also it's one of the best lyrics I've, I've written so far. Yeah, I didn't ask about this uh, new album, which is uh, your favorite song, just because I think that uh, one of the questions from your fan is about it, is th that question. I'm not sure because it was not clear, but maybe I can read and uh, we can figure out uh, what was the meaning of the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and... Um, I had something in my mind that now flow away. Yeah, maybe it's coming back. But yeah, um, you played now, uh, I think, two shows this spring, summer, or yes. one? We played uh, at always um, in Trieste, as Rock Camp. Yeah. Uh, we are quite. Uh, I can say habitué <laughs> there, um, not only as a playing band, but also as a audience. <laughs> we always like to go even, uh, not only in the day in which we play, but also in the other days uh, to see uh, a bit of metal in this city. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you planning uh, a tour or a uh just few dates right now we have just few dates confirmed but maybe we are working to promote the new album with maybe a little tour there is nothing uh, confirmed right now yeah but just a few days uh, uh, the first one will be of course the release party in trieste yeah when is going to be on 25 um, it will be the week before, on the 18th of August. Okay. And uh, in the past, you played around Europe. Uh, so far, which one was the most crazy show and what? And uh, yeah, and why? Um, well, there is a show I always love to, to quote because it really remained in my heart and it will stay in my heart forever, and which is uh, the festival in Bulgaria, Hills of Rock, where we played on the main stage together with uh, um, Royal Republic, Amaranth, and uh, Children of Bottom and Garbage. But also I have to say also another one, um, because you used the, the term crazy. <laughs> and so maybe for the crazy part, I have to say the concert we did in, um, in Crete, um, uh, it was uh, called um, uh, Kanya Rock or Chania Rock. I, I'm not sure if it's pronounced well. In Italian is La Canea, <laughs> the, the capital of Crete. Yeah. Um, there, the stage was awesome because it was really two steps from the sea. And after the show, uh, there we played with Uli John Roth, Tari Turunen. And, um, and after the show, everyone <laughs> from the, the stage set just moved to the only one rock bar just uh, in front of the sea 
<laughs> and we were all together, drinking together, speaking together, laughing together. Um, we end up uh, losing uh, Lorenzo and Alfredo, which were uh, our drummer at the time. Um, incredibly, because, you know, we had the, the hotel by the sea. This bar was by the sea. So it was simply to go <laughs> yeah. to the sea and you will find uh, your home. But I don't know how they get lost. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that were, was really a crazy concert and a crazy after, yeah. after party. But it sounded really nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but how they find the, the way back? How did they find the, the way back to the hotel? We still don't know. We still don't know because even when they were... Um, answering the phone, uh, they, they were speaking just monosyllable, <laughs> and <laughs> we couldn't, could not understand. It. But in the end, uh, they could come back. Were they drunk, maybe? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just because the monosyllable answer was like, okay, then there was some alcohol going on. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a Greek barman which uh, really loved us because I think that we we consumed uh, <laughs> everything he had. <laughs> <laughs> he was happy after after you were there. He made money. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. Uh, well, I just I just tell you this. Um, Alfredo, <laughs> the drummer, went inside um, asking for another drink, but he, he meant only his drink, which was empty. The barman understood another turn of drinks for everyone, <laughs> and so <laughs> it was a mess, but a beautiful mess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, and if I remember well, it was was 2017 when you were on tour with Lordi. With Lordi, uh, no, I think it was 2015. Okay. Yes, because we had um, we were promoting Pain the World at the time, so. It was 2015. Okay. That yeah, was that tour was kind of crazy. Um, it was the very first big tour for us, so we learned a lot and we had a lot of fun. Yeah. What's the best thing about touring, and what what's the worst? Well, the best thing, of course, is to meet. Um, people who love music as much as you do and not only other artists but of course uh, also in the audience uh, a lot of people who come to you after the concert uh, to congratulate to buy something to have a picture with you and uh, to speak with you simply to drink a beer and so those moments are really the best of, uh, of touring. Uh, then, of course, also the moments we spend just together as a band, uh, because we like a lot when we have time, we like a lot to visit cities. So we, we are a lot <laughs> tourists uh, before being musicians <laughs> on tour. We like to eat uh, something typical, we like to go on uh, the most famous places. Uh, um, so also that that time together is really yeah. um, a good memory. The worst thing uh, is without doubt uh, the time spent uh, in the van traveling uh, because it's really uh, tiring and uh, it, it's really a lot of time. I think it's 
it steals more than 50% of, of the time of the entire tour. So. Yeah, yeah, I can figure it. It's, it's yeah. not easy. Yeah. Uh, I had, again, there was that thing in my mind, and I was wrong. Why? Why? Now it's actually, yeah, now it's back. Now it's back. <laughs> How does Synergy songs uh, start? Or well, how do you start to write a song? Do you start to write uh, the lyrics or is uh, the music before, the melody? How, how does it work in, in your band? Yes, we have quite, uh, quite the same pattern now that we work together from a lot of years. <laughs> um, and the scheme is the is this. Um, usually Lorenzo, the guitarist, uh, comes up with um, a riff and a structure of a song. Then I let myself be inspired by what that riff and that structure, structure suggest me. And so I start writing the first draft of melodies, and, uh, and of lyrics. I try as much as I can to, um, to make the two things, melody and lyrics, start together because when they rise together, I think that uh, they are more focused and more uh, coherent with uh, the entire atmosphere that the song uh, already, already has, uh, although in us, um, yeah. and so so I, I try as much as I can to do both together. Then, when the, the first draft of music and lyrics is uh, composed, we work all together on the arrangements. Uh, I work with with Stefano on the vo vocal parts. He has uh, uh, maybe growth, maybe uh, kind of rapping parts, uh, or maybe some ad adding melodies. Uh, while uh, uh, Lorenzo with Davide and Gabriele, uh, bass and drums, uh, they work uh, on, um, on uh, refining the details of the musical parts. And Davide also adds uh, uh, the keyboards. When, when needed in the songs. So here's how quite every Synergy song starts. Yeah, okay, nice to know because every, every band works differently. So it's, it's really interesting to, to know how, how it works. Um, I have a fun fact about, about you and me. Sinaresi and me. Uh, when you release your uh, EP, The Spider and the Butterfly, mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook there was uh, this uh, contest uh, to to win the EP, and uh, well, I I remember I commented and then I was contacted uh, by a previous drummer, and uh, yeah, the, you won, and I was. Did I? And I think that this year I won two EPs, or one was a album, but yeah, it was like, yeah, well, what's happening? Because normally I, I'm not someone that wins something, I'm quite, quite, quite rarely happened, but uh, yeah, yeah, that was the fun fact. <laughs> that was your lucky day <laughs> to win two albums. Yeah. <laughs> I have another fun, fun fact about Synergy and me. <laughs> uh, last uh, concert I saw before I moved to Finland was uh, the release, uh, the release party of uh, Paint the World. So it was the last one <laughs> in uh, in Trieste in Italy. Well, uh, so you are since a lot of years <laughs> in Finland. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, been so nice. almost ten. <laughs> I 
Lisa that you were taking pictures too. I, I don't know if there was the release party of Clean the Words, but maybe in other concerts. I remember you with the, <laughs> the for the camera. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was that gig, yeah. Because we were talking, I think that who was there? Someone was there talking with, uh, I was talking with you and there was someone else. And we were talking that I was living to Finland. But I can remember who was the other person. <laughs> but yeah, I had the camera and back then my photos were really bad. So I have good photos of your gigs. So not yet, maybe in the future. <laughs> maybe in the future, maybe in the future. We, we... We never been in Finland, so maybe it's time yeah, to come. You should come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let's talk about metal. Metal in general. Uh, I want to know how did you get into metal? There was well, a particular band, or I think it was uh, kind of. A gradual process <laughs> because I always like music but of course I had uh, someone uh, who let me know <laughs> of famous metal bands and of course about female in metal bands which was quite a, a, a rarity at the, at the time when I started. Uh, there were really few bands and of course I cannot say Nightwish because of Taria and uh, um, Lacuna Coil because of Christina Scaglia. Let's say that if, if I have to talk about metal in general, I started to listen to metal bands uh, well before, well, since when I was a child, because my brother, which is um, older than me, had a lot of uh, music cassettes. <laughs> Music cassette. Uh, I don't know if the, the English name is correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they were all um, um, without the names uh, on on the cover. They were they were all recorded by the radio, and they were not written who the artist was. So I found myself listening to every kind of band without knowing <laughs> they were really a big metal band. Uh, just after years, I discovered uh, that I knew all the Pesh Mode discography, all the Smashing Pumpkins discography, but I never knew they were called Smashing Pumpkins <laughs> or Metallica or Iron Maiden. Or, um, so I started listening to metal when I was a child because of this. But when first I decided I can do metal myself, it was when I discovered uh, the, the very first uh, female, um, female actors, I can, I can say actresses of this wonderful scene. And so Taria and so Christina Scabia and, and so on. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, what's your favorite band? This is hard. Um, well, after all these uh, um, words about metal, you will be very <laughs> surprised. I <know>. <laughs> but I have a favorite band, which is a non-metal band. They are placebo. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a good one. <laughs> yes, it's a good one, though it's not metal. Then I I loved, of course, Queen. Um, classic. A great classic, but uh, also a great example of how, in my opinion, music should be free to go, to, to experiment with styles, with genres, with uh, themes, uh, lyrical themes. So I think they are really, really um, the greatest band that, that has ever been on earth. And then I like a lot System of a Down. And so, yes, I, I could say this, this three <laughs> is my personal favorites. Yeah. 
what was your first uh, concert that you went to see? Do you remember? Oh, my memory is not very good. So I, I don't remember which one was my first concert. Mm, I just remember, I, I'm sure it, it was not the first, but one of my first concerts was Prato um, Varios at Alcatraz in Milan. Uh, it was around, I think, 2008. Yeah. I, I don't remember the year, but yeah. I, I remember that concert. It's not my first for sure, but now I don't have uh, memories going back. Yeah. Mm, no, no. Mm, my memory is not good <laughs> on it. Well, let's take the Stratovarius gig in 2008. <laughs> it's okay. fine. Let's, let's say it was. <laughs> uh, and uh, what is, in your opinion, uh, talking about uh, metal albums, the best metal album, the one that you would listen all the time with, without getting tired? That's also a very difficult question because I am a person who, who gets tired really fast. Okay. <laughs> and so uh, even when I love something, uh, um, I need a break sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But I think that maybe um, maybe a sword album, a system of a down album, success um, I would say. Yeah, it's or maybe also is considered really, really uh, important and uh, that affect many other musicians. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And one of the reasons is because also it has a very uh, flow in the songs, uh, which are very fast and aggressive, that in my opinion, it, it flows very well, all the album, all the other. Yeah. Um, but for a different reason, I think also one of the... Um, oh, I like a lot to listen to, um, for this reason, um, James Labrie solos, solos albums, yeah, which are full of great songs, great singles, which are which are really um, pleasant to sing along, and so I like also those albums from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Okay. Let's to the next part of this interview. That is. Uh, people questions on, uh, on social media uh, most of people probably probably don't know that they have the chance to to ask since this is a new project so not many people know but we got something so the question that uh, that I was a bit uh, a bit figuring out what was the question <laughs> Okay. Is from Instagram and is uh, Hakim uh, whatever <laughs> yeah I can I cannot pronounce the name but he's a uh, big fans of yours so uh, uh, was what song that she wrote in this new album but what is the probably I I'm, I'm thinking that what is this the your favorite song that you wrote in this new album? Okay, okay. Let's say that this is the question. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope that you uh, what you want to, to ask. <laughs> um, I think that, of course, uh, it's difficult to choose only one favorite. So I have two or three. <laughs> but I think that one of my favorites for sure is uh, The Life You Left Behind which is the third song in the album. Um, because I think it's really one of the most mature songs we've written. Okay. Uh, as for 
it is stru structured and for the way in which uh, um, all the, the instruments, the melodies uh, grow up from the central part uh, to the end. I really love that, uh, that progression, that, uh, um, that climax in the song. Then another one I also like a lot is Black Spirit, which is uh, inspired uh, by uh, some manga and anime I read, uh, which is a very strong and hopeful song, differently from Castaways. So uh, as we said before, we like a lot to explore into, to dive into sensations and into feelings. So Black Spirit, you will see it's a very strong, uh, powerful song. What manga? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, the manga is Black Clover. Okay. By Yuki Tabata. Yes, yes, a, a classic uh, shaman yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> for uh, with with uh, those uh, sensations of uh, yes, uh, we can do it. Uh, we have to be strong. We have to be together. So a very classical shonen, but I like a lot to <laughs> to be to dive in that emotion. Yeah. So I I decided to write about it. Yeah. And so we'll be the one, one. Two are my favorite. The third one, yes, there is a third one. And I I will go with the song Revolution. Revolution, I think it's the very first we, we've written, or maybe the second, but one of the very first, um, which has a, um, quite a, a new metal style, new metal of band like, uh, I don't know, Linkin Park, Evanescence, that's a vibe of uh, first uh, 2000, 2010, <laughs> that decade. And so I like it a lot because I grew with that kind of music and, uh, and uh, I like how this song recall also that style. Yeah. I can't wait to hear all those songs. <laughs> we can't wait to release the album. <laughs> still a bit, still a bit, a bit more than one month. <laughs> then there was a question on Facebook from Tony. And he wrote, uh, famous things, singers in metal bands are so beautiful. Let's leave a question on this topic. How long does it take before the gig to do the makeup and choose the costume and other accessories? Oh. <laughs> this is the, the very first time that I, I receive a question like that. But indeed, it's a very important part uh, of how we want to introduce ourselves of how I want to introduce myself as the singer of Synergy. Yeah. Because of course it's um, it's quite it's a job. <laughs> I, I'm in a role in that moment. And so yes, uh, having the right dress, the right accessories, the right makeup is part of the game. Um, as for the dress and accessories, uh, in the years, uh, I bought uh, <laughs> a great wardrobe of <laughs> metal outfits, so it's quite easy for me to go there and pick one dress. Uh, oh, okay, this will be okay for that concert, for that occasion. While for the makeup, I am completely unable to do it by, by myself, <laughs> completely. <laughs> And so I have to rely on uh, um, professional makeup artists. Okay. And that, of course, that uh, needs, uh, that takes a bit of time more, uh, one, two hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I would be nothing without my makeup artists. <laughs> let's, let's. Let me send a heart to Valentina <laughs> and Jessica. I love you. <laughs> so you have a big crew. <laughs> yeah. When you are uh, doing gigs. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, it's, it's nice. Um, but those were the questions that people ask. So let's go to the next part. Okay. It's the random topics. I have this. this okay. Full of topics. Let's see. Let's hope that is not the same as the first interview. <laughs> so it's going to be. Let's let's see. I'm picking this. The first one is uh, da 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 da. Embarrassing moments. Uh, so, what is the most embarrassing moment you had in your life? In my life? Yeah. Okay, in my life. Now, maybe I think that the most embarrassing moment was related to concerts anyway. Mm, it was in 2016 when we were on tour with Talia. And on the first, uh, very first date, I, I could meet her um, in the, behind, the, behind, this, behind the stage. And I remained wordless, completely. <laughs> I saw her and Lorenzo was, go, go greet her, tell her that uh, you love her, <laughs> tell whatever you want, uh, go, go, just go. And I was a stone. <laughs> I remained totally a stone. <laughs> so when she she turned to me and said hello, <laughs> oh my God! I don't know what I was thinking in that moment, but it was really really embarrassing. <laughs> but then Lorenzo pushed me <laughs> and so go and we could. Uh, we could speak together <laughs> a bit. <laughs> there was the this anxiety of yes, yes, yes. You know, it was one one of my lowest fingers. <laughs> yeah, of your heart. So, yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what about the uh, embarrassing moment on the stage? Did you have any? On the stage? Yeah. yeah. On the stage? Well, um, I, I can say, of course, uh, when we were just um, playing for the very first times uh, as a band together, uh, when we were playing uh, uh, around uh, bars and pubs uh, here in Trieste or just a, a few kilometers around. We were just learning how to uh, how to be on stage, how to be um, convincing. Non mi viene il termine. Or credible. Credible, yeah. Uh, how to be credible on stage. And so Sometimes it was embarrassing because there were weird silences between songs uh, or weird movements, uh, uh, one with the other, so something like that. But we were learning uh, yeah. how, how to be a credible on stage. Yeah. Then one embarrassing moment was uh, um, during a concert in Spain, I think, when my where the strap of my bra just broke <laughs> and so I was like oh, 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 oh with my microphone like this and then uh, when the song finished uh, I just went in the back and, oh, <laughs> and put it back again Load malfunction <laughs> yeah. that's that's a bad one <laughs> when happened but it was not broken it was just no 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 it was just um um, unbounded, but it was not broken, luckily. <laughs> that was good then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's pick another argument. Let's see what we are talking next. This one. Oh, again, this one, last time, is social media. So, what, what's your opinion on social media? You are opening a 
Pandora Bays. <laughs> because I think that social media are the evil of the century. Of course, um, of course we, are, we are gonna use it and uh, sometimes I like to use them uh, because of uh, being in a band means also uh, manage social media. Yeah. And, but I think that social media brought uh, too much fastness in in the use of music and so i i don't like them a lot yeah um, um, of course they are part of the game we we cannot grow without them anymore uh, we understand it's the way that the word uses to communicate and so we use it too and we try to use it uh, at our best of course but uh, i don't like to share a lot of me uh, a lot of things about me and of course above all i don't like to share them with such velocity with such speed yeah. Such, uh, it's such a consuming way. Um, so they are good because, of course, uh, uh, music could not could not go anywhere in the world if it wasn't for social media and for internet in, in general. But um, they are, uh, I mean, uh, which I I don't like too much. <laughs> Yeah, I think that at the beginning it was like good, it was something mm -hmm. nice, but then uh, everything turned uh, in another way. And uh, also, you know, uh, at the beginning it was uh, my space, and uh, then uh, in Italy we had the net that I didn't underst understood how it, it you had to put picture people had to like those picture and then you get you were getting points and uh, was it a, uh, Chiara Ferrani that start from net log something like this I, do, I don't know but it was something for me like I have no idea how it was and my space was nice because you were able to put uh, the music, a song from a band music. I had always, uh, I think, Sonata Artica. <laughs> so you were showing your taste yes. for those that were visiting your profile because otherwise it was just for yourself. Then came Facebook, and in the beginning it was interesting, but then I don't know. For example, today I opened Facebook and there are all those um, advertising of things that I don't really inter. I'm not interested. Also, they are uh, they, they are about uh, losing weight and I'm like, are you telling me that I'm fat? <laughs> and then the second thing is those are not uh, evidence based, so there is not scientific uh, res yeah. based uh, yeah, yeah, it's another thing I, I people are buying those things so why why I'm, I'm like that's crazy yes yes I completely agree it's another thing I don't like about social media uh, it's that they sell you everything without a little bit of the um, approfondimento <laughs> of go deep in yeah. in, uh, in things that maybe could also affect your health your your well-being in general yeah. and so it's another thing which is quite dangerous if if it's not used in the right way yeah and then it's instagram that was supposed to maybe at the beginning support artists with their uh, photos, images, yes, uh, yes. art, but then became just uh, 
So a selfie things, so are a celebration of uh, yourself. Uh, just uh, look at me, I'm beautiful. Uh, just putting those images that are nothing like the person, because when you see those people live, they are not like in the images. And I'm like, why? Why are those people changing this themselves uh, because people see you or how you are in in real life and now there is this uh, TikTok thing that uh, i'm not in and i'm i'm thinking that i never going to be on TikTok, but i don't know maybe one day i will be there too and i don't i don't understand uh, why someone would like to watch those videos of all people doing same things with the same song uh, and uh, even when they are dancing that for me is not dancing that is moving part of your body without a uh, um, rhythmic and uh, fluency i don't know maybe because i have a, a background as gymnast so i i see those things like terrible but yeah of course <laughs> i don't know your opinion about tiktok well, yeah we we opened as a band the tiktok a few months ago but is uh, gabriele the drummer which is also the youngest one of the band who who manage it I don't even have a profile. I, I told him, I refuse to follow TikTok. You do. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I, I like to do some selfies sometimes, but when I am, as I said before, in the role of uh, the singer of Synergy, yes, I like to promote my band also through my image because I, I like how I am when I do what I love. I like that part of me, which is the musician, the singer. But yeah, I don't, I don't even think about make a selfie when I am uh, at home, uh, at the beach, uh, uh, at work. Uh, at, um, I don't even think about it. And maybe I'm too old to, <laughs> to use the socials. It's getting old. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I want to tell you a secret. It's not a secret anymore. Or maybe it's never be, it's it was never a secret. I'm not able to take selfie. I'm I don't know how to do it. And uh, whatever I try, they look terrible. And then I was I'm like I I don't like to use the phone as as a uh, camera, you know. And then I take my camera and put uh, something makeup or or clothes and uh, go maybe outside and take a photos that okay this look good enough and that's it but it's camera work like this, mm -hmm. uh, the post production with the lights and the contrast and that's it because I'm I, I also I, I I'm not really able to use Photoshop I don't have Photoshop so I don't know. I'm I'm terrible with technology. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're in good company. <laughs> also, nice. me when when I try to do some selfie, I think I do something like twenty pictures, and then I ask uh, uh, bot Gabriele, bot, tell me how to do <laughs> any, but put the phone higher or lower, and well, come here, there is more light. <laughs> I'm not good with that. There is someone that knows how to do selfie. Yeah. It's good that someone can advise you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's talk about pizza. Yeah. Do you like pizza? Yeah. yeah. What, what is your favorite pizza? a very hard question because uh, every time I like to, to change it <laughs> when I order pizza but I think that maybe my favorite pizza ever is um, 
Um, prosciutto e funghi. Ok. Ham and mushrooms. <laughs> a classico, a big classico. Yeah, but it's a good one. And where did you eat your the best pizza? Well, you know that here in Italy there is um, a division between who likes the pizza with the high border and with the very low and crunchy border. I, yeah. am a, I prefer the second version, which is most used in the center of Italy, um, because my origins are from there, and so I prefer that kind of pizza. And so I can say the very best that I've eaten was maybe maybe from from there, from center, from Assisi, in the center of Italy. Huh. Um, one a couple of years ago, no, more than a couple, that was before before the pandemic. Uh, me and Lorenzo went on holiday to to see to visit my parents, and then we moved to Umbria to Assisi to visit the city, and there we had a really really good pizza. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember the name of the pizzeria, but it was really but good. There was a good one, so maybe if I need to visit Assisi, I have to. Try all the pizza as <laughs> there to find yes, yes. <laughs> but for sure it wasn't it wasn't Lorenzo's favorite because he likes more the high border. <laughs> so we are we have two different uh, I never thought about if I prefer the that one or the other one because it's more about the taste itself on, on the overall for me. Hmm. Or maybe I put more attention of the uh, tomato sauce that that is something that it's important <laughs> yeah yeah uh, where did you eat the worst pizza <laughs> the worst pizza was absolutely one here uh, in trieste um, we ordered uh, at home a pizza which arrived kind of two hours later. And after we we called again, they told us, uh, oh, sorry for the delay, we are coming. Uh, and also we will give you a free Coke uh, for, uh, for the delay. We ordered the pizza with uh, salami and, uh, and uh, French chips. French chips, le patatine fritte, sì. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe people are wondering, what the hell, French yeah. fries on the pizza? Yeah, it's a thing in Italy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a thing. And then another hour later, uh, the pizza arrived. It was cold. It was quite raw. There were, there were not the French fries. <laughs> And there were there was not the free coke, <laughs> nothing. Well, it was a sad pizza. A very very sad pizza. Oh. Very very sad. So long waited and that so then so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I can figure. But there is now the the biggest. The biggest question, because the world is divided into the one that think that pineapple belongs to pizza and the one that think that pineapple doesn't belong to pizza. What do you think? Uh, I'm on the critical side. Uh, pineapple doesn't belong to pizza. So no pineapple on pizza. We have two to vote for pineapple not pizza but both far from and okay i'm not counting mine but both far from italian people so let's see ne next interview is going to be i'm not sure which one is going to appear before if it's 
uh, Englishman or a Finnish man. Uh, let's see what they will yes. say. <laughs> yeah, so maybe with them uh, you could have some other answers. But I think that with Italian people, <laughs> you will always hear no pineapple on pizza. Yeah, it's really, really uh, difficult to find any Italian that will say that pineapple goes on pizza. It's, I, I don't, but there's a pizzeria that sell the Hawaiiana pizza. So, M and uh, pineapple. Yes, I, I saw I saw it in uh, more than one menu here in the pizzerias of Trieste, but I never take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's something that I I cannot understand. But if someone likes, fine. But for yes. me, pineapple is a, a dessert part, <laughs> and pizza is the main, the main. But I can say that I. Tasted pineapple in rice, and I like I like it a lot. So, but of course, it's a different thing from pizza. Yeah. So rice with pineapple is quite an Asian uh, Asian plate that uh, I, I discovered I like it a lot. But okay. no, on pizza, um, I think I will never even try. I'm not interested. <laughs> Yeah, so pineapple approved on the rice and yes. not approved on the pizza. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we have done with this interview. Thank you so much to be part of this new project, Metal Pizza. It was really nice that you accepted and uh, you were talking about everything. <laughs> And uh, we are waiting for your new album, and I hope to see you in Finland someday. And yeah, do you want to say something, something to your fans? First of all, I want to thank you for thinking about me for your new project, and good luck for all the interviews in the future. And. Um, what can I say? I hope that uh, uh, you will keep on supporting metal music from Italy and from all over the world. And uh, I am um, I can't wait to release the new album and I hope you will like uh, Event Horizon as much as uh, we like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um...